This is Nancy Vandermeer, and you're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. Welcome to your hometown news. I'm April Frelke, and I'm here on Zoom with my co-host, Joe Minnie, and we have a special guest co-host with us joining us this evening for our Thanksgiving edition. Nick Kaufman will be joining us as well. So a little different setup. We'll be Zoom all night, but we are still delivering your hometown news in the same Lynx fashion. And so, Joe, it's Thanksgiving week. We're a lot of things to be thankful for, and uh, how are you? You have got a great screen background. Yeah, um, it's 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 been nice. Uh, have a nice background and everything like that. You know, feel like I'm in the studio. But um, no, I'm I'm thankful for actually. Um, I just realized it's like I really like being in the, the local area, Tomo Warren's area, and um, uh, last week's show I was talking about how. Uh, the Packer fans, they like they like their Packer games, and and I was kind of like joking with them about you know I don't mind them losing, but um, I got a little bit of flack from that on the home front, and I just want to maybe apologize to our viewers <laughs> if they're the diehard Packer fans, but just know it's in jest, and but I do uh, I do feel very grateful knowing that the 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 folks here in Wisconsin, especially in this area, they're very passionate about everything. They're passionate about their Packers. They're passionate about their badgers, uh, and they're they're passionate about just working hard and playing hard. And it's something that um, I've grown to love uh, being here since uh, since uh, 2014. So um, that's what I'm grateful for. I would say the most. Nick, we'll uh, maybe jump over to you in Tennessee. You do you want to share with our viewers what you're thankful for this Thanksgiving season? Wow, let's see. Uh, well, I'm thankful that things are working out for this this move. Uh, it's it's very um, very strenuous, very tough on on Lucy and I in a way because everything is new. On the other hand, that's something to be thankful for. Now, I do miss being home in Toma. I do miss all of my Lynx 24 family in person. But the other thing I'm grateful for is that um, that my family, and our family, in fact, both uh, in Eau Claire down in Illinois, is that they've really encouraged us to, because of the virus, is to stay here, stay calm, stay with the few local people that we've, we've met in this short uh, short time. And so, and because of what's happening nationwide, we feel a little bit, actually a little bit better because they're the nation is encouraging people to stay put. And so it kind of makes us feel like we're not the only people doing it. So yeah, lots to be thankful for. A lot of change, a lot of change. Yes, there there is a lot of change and, and just grateful. You know, um, as, as somebody in Wisconsin, forever in Wisconsin, right? Joe, you, you've moved here. And Nick, you're here from um, New York. But I am so thankful for like family. And I just really believe like Wisconsin has such you know, that not like only a work ethic, but a family ethic, like family first. I know we hear our president talk about America first, but I really feel like Wisconsin is very much family first. And so I'm just so thankful for my family and that my family's healthy and that our family's there for each other when we need it. You know, we, we take each other to appointments. We Even when we can't get together on holidays, we can come up with something creative just to be together. So you know, I'm kind of declaring Wisconsin family first for this Thanksgiving. So, you know, it's kind of embracing that idea. Yeah, I like it. Very good. Family first. Can't beat it. Yes. So any um, big Thanksgiving, not big Thanksgiving plans, but while we have just a few minutes, what are uh, um, some of your favorite, like, little holiday, the dessert or the holiday meal portions? So what's your favorite part of the, the meal? Who do you want? Who do you want to talk first? Joe, Joe, why don't you jump in first with that? Oh well, I like usually uh, a, a good turkey with uh, dressing, uh, with all the gravy and all that. That's always good. But um, I always look forward to actually pumpkin pie. It's just one of those things. I I know folks like pecan pie and all that stuff, but I really look forward to, to pumpkin pie. A really good pumpkin pie, um, just to you know make the belt go a little bit bigger at the end of the of the feast. 
Well, and Nick, I'm going to just ask real quick, give it a real quick second, and then we're going to introduce our guests while we're speaking of food, okay? You can't beat rutabaga at Thanksgiving, and you got to have stuffing that has uh, gizzards in it. That's it. All right. <laughs> well, um, thank you, Nick. Wow, that's it's unusual. You rutabaga. said you wanted a minute. <laughs> yes. So, well, anyways, um, for our hometown news this evening, our guest this evening is Mark Chu from Marco's American Italian Grill in Warren's. And um, Marco, you're joining us as our guest tonight. We're going to be talking about food and restaurant stuff. So we just want to welcome you to the show via Zoom. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, April. And Nick and Joe. Good Happy to see you, to you. And Mark, hey, Mark, before we go to commercial real quick, Mark, can you give us your favorite food item at the Thanksgiving meal before we jump to commercial and get started with that? Uh, you know, I, I like uh, turkey. <laughs> you know why? Because it's just such a history. You know, the thankful thing and, you know, the, the foundation, how it started. And uh, uh, all said and done, that's probably my favorite because uh, how the tradition started and the family value. Like, uh, like Nick and Joe said, I think the family value is very important. Get together and sit around the table. That was fun. Oh, thank you, Mark. Okay. <laughs> All right, Joe, you want to take us out to commercial? Sure. Well, as always, the catering for the cast and crew has been provided by Marco's Italian and American Grill and Warrens. Great food with fun and a relaxing atmosphere at Marco's. But up next, we will continue our Thanksgiving theme by looking to the future of things to be thankful for. But first, we want to thank our program sponsors, and we'll be right back. Hometown News is brought to you by Oakdale Credit Union, Hardware Hank in New Lisbon, The Fun Company, Game Room Store, and The Little Cottage Home Decor and More in New Lisbon. Hardware Hank. Lots of important projects, from paint to plumbing, electrical, and maintenance. We have the area's largest selection of Milwaukee tools. Hey, it's what the pros use. We even have an in-store chainsaw sharpening service. It's time to build your property's value with Hardware Hank New Lisbon. You've got a lot more going for you with Hank, Hardware Hank. The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. Your health is important to us at Toma Health, and by taking a few steps like wearing a mask and social distancing, you can help stop the spread to keep our community safe and well. To protect our community, we're offering Video Visit. Video Visit provides secure face-to-face -face access to a board-certified medical provider online to assess specific medical conditions and prescribe common medications. The service is easy to access and available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Learn more about Video Visit at tomahealth.org. Relax at Marco's Italian and American Grill in Warrens, Wisconsin. I'm Nora Collins. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. With our co-host Joe Minnie and guest co-host Nick Kaufman, but most importantly, our guest Mark Chu, Mark all the way from Warrens, and we're gonna just start. We're gonna have a little interview with you for about five minutes. Can you tell us? Start off. You have some future plans with the restaurant. Do you want to maybe give us a little hint on that? What's coming up for you? Well, right now with uh, everything going on, we find out that. People need a reason to, you know, they don't want to stay home. So we plan to, we build a stage, we have live music. So uh, at Thursday night, we have open mic night, people come in, they sing. I mean, they just want to play some music and then, fr and then Friday have a karaoke. Then Saturday, we have a live band. Then Sunday, we have a lot of fun with bingo. Uh, bingo, you know, all the local people get together and just, you know, uh, just to have that fun. And that's the whole idea. 
uh, we just want to get together and have fun, sort of try to forget little things, what's, what's going on. Um, and we need to make uh, the market is different now. You just can't wait to people come to you. I mean, you can't wait to, you know, you have to go after them. You have to give them a reason why you want to come. And that's very important right now with the time we face it. So, so we Mark, brought a, uh, I'm so we, we brought a lobster tank in too. We have live lobster flying from Maine. And we're the only one to have the closest live lobster you can get around here is Madison. So, hey, can you ship me down one of those? I got a five pound for you for Christmas, sir. Oh, all right, Nick. I just oh. like New York. Just like that would New be, York. Oh, that'd be the best. That's like that's like book binders in Pennsylvania. Ooh, yes, it is. And, and I'm doing a Friday out doing a Friday Alblo sauce for you. They spicy mayonnaise sauce for you with that. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's worth the trip up. <laughs> I think so. So, Mark, have you done any changes to the restaurant with uh, in regards to like COVID spacing and that sort of thing? What kind of measures have you put in place? Well, right now, uh, we space our table and chairs. We remodel and we space a little bit farther apart than normal. Okay, um, and we obviously we do a lot. Of majority of our business is dining, but we have a lot of to-go orders as well. Mm. And right now, people are very care, you know very careful what they're doing and all due respect you know with everything going on with the election with uh, I believe in this area is the greatest place to live in the people like Joe like you say earlier there's a very kind people here they very care they make sure you're doing fine they make sure they support you and we didn't plan to be here this long to be honest with you now we're in process buying a building uh, we 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 plan to be here for a while. So, uh, but we're very concerned because the health is a very important issue right now. Marco, with with all these activities that you're doing with the restaurant, you know, getting customers to come with the bingo night and the stage, stuff like that. Um, can you tell us a little bit too about where our viewers can find all those in, that information for the dates and times and what nights are going on well, right now, we, you can get on Facebook and our website, and uh, we can get that all information. We post a different special. Like tonight, we have a taco night tonight, and we have a taco pizza. As you know, eight months ago, we brought in a brick oven pizza, and with a perfect timing, that's like two weeks before we were forced to close to the public, so that pizza did real well. And we have a special dough, just our brick, uh, brick oven, and we're the only one. The closest brick oven pizza around is right now is Lacoste. So we're trying to do something different than, you know, uh, just a hamburger or fried fish or a prime rib. And we, as you know, we know for our pasta. And people travel far distant for our pasta. We have lobster ravioli. It's, it's a top seller. Uh, Alfredo sauce. I never realized how important cheese is here until I moved here. <laughs> and I didn't realize, you know, these three, three things I learned over here when I moved here, Friday night fish fry, old-fashioned Alfredo sauce. <laughs> so we, I'm adapting. I'm adapting. <laughs> yeah, you're doing more than adapting. I, I think that some of these things that you're that you're doing are just fantastic. Uh, keep the community uh, alive and, and, uh, and encouraged uh, during this time, Mark. That's, that's just super. That's great. So you know? the, the, the community has been very helpful to us. I mean, been great to us. And, you uh, and and as you know, we just had a golf tournament two months ago. We raised for the town of Lincoln, and we raised close you know, twenty thousand dollars for it because the community stepped up and they all support. And you are and then, such a great community involvement, Marco. We thank you so much. We hope you have a great Thanksgiving. We need to wrap it up, and we have encouraging thoughts coming up next. Stay tuned. Your health is important to us at Toma Health, and by taking a few steps like wearing a mask and social distancing, you can help stop the spread to keep our community safe and well. To protect our community, we're offering Video Visit. Video Visit provides secure face-to-face -face access to a board-certified medical provider online to assess specific medical conditions and prescribe common medications. The service is easy to access and available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Learn more about Video Visit at tomahealth.org. 
This hot tub is so relaxing. The stress of the week just melts away. Hanging out with friends is fun. And we have so many reasons to get together. My Traeger Grill is the difference between a good and an amazing barbecue. The Fun Company Game Room Store is where the fun begins. What's the more in the little cottage home decor and more? Fashion. Shopping is fun at the little cottage. Little Cottage, Home Decor, and more. New Lisbon. The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. And welcome back. And we are on our next segment of Encouraging Thoughts. We're excited to have Nick joining Joe and I with yes. Encouraging Thoughts. And um, this evening, we're going to be talking kind of about gratitude. And so we know that research tells us that your brain can only have one thought at a time. So when we're upset and stressed out, when we stay in those thinking thoughts, our body kind of holds into that energy. So the idea to think of a, a gratitude or something to be thankful for it gets your brain out of that anger, stress into this other thinking thought. So Nick and Joe, what do you think about that thought of the fact that your brain can't have one thought at one time? It can only be one thought at one time. So we want to focus on gratitude. Oh, okay. Well, first, uh, uh, Joe, do you, have, you mind me? Joe, do you have something to say real fast or not? Well, um, I think I'm I'm grateful for the the friends and family I have around me all the time. Uh, it's it's if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have uh, uh, sounding boards for you know my thoughts and feelings and or, or just validation of how I'm feeling about something or how I how I think about a certain thing. So having uh, having friends and family nearby to be able to discuss that stuff that's I'm very grateful for that. Mm. I guess uh, I look at gratitude first. First, I've been watching you guys do this segment here for the last whatever weeks, and I think you're doing a good job. It's a good segment, and thank you very much for including me. Um, I look at gratitude kind of from a spir spiritual perspective, kind of looking at blessings. And so, and I find that I'm personally encouraged when I'm looking out at the world and I'm thinking of the various blessings and then that's really easy then to go from blessings to thankfulness okay i mean you know you go hey that's that's cool about that and then you go hey i'm and i'm thankful for it and so it does th this idea of uh, uh, top of mind that that's a marketing and advertising uh, concept also uh, that, uh people who are selling you things that they want you to have top of mind when it comes to a particular subject so if you're if you're in a subject like uh, buying a refrigerator, they want to go as soon as you flip your refrigerator thinking on, they want top of mind their brand, okay? And Ooh. so here, you know, we want and you're you're suggesting encouragement for the fact that um, that when it comes to things around us, instead of looking at the glass half empty all the time, okay, we look at the glass almost always the half full. And within that context, it's a lot easier than to be grateful for things and be less crabby. And believe me, at, at my age, it's easy to be a curmudgeon. So I have to work on it all the time. <laughs> Nick, that is a great word, curmudgeon. But I, and you know that glass half empty, half full concept? I've even heard it that you can even switch it, the perspective of that, and be thankful that you have a glass. It's like, oh. I have a glass that I can fill. Your okay. cup runneth over or it doesn't at all. But who cares? You know, I have a cup. Yeah, you know, you know, even shift that whole thinking of you have a glass. I, I'm thankful that I have this glass. 
So you're suggesting that you that you can actually go deeper. So you can be grateful and thankful that you have a meal in front of you. You can also be grateful and thankful for the abode that you're in having that meal and also for the resources that go into buying it or preparing it. So you're right. It, it has tangents and depth to it. You know, the other day I was... I was in a hurry after school, after after school at six o'clock, I need to stop and run and get something. And the cashier was just, I was like, I need to get home. I just, you know, wanted, and I just stopped while they were busy with whatever. And I'm the only one in the store thinking this should go faster. And I just kept thinking to myself, I'm so thankful I have money to purchase this Alfredo sauce actually is what I was stopping to get. And I'm thankful that I have a car to drive me. Like it was just, it's okay. I'm not in a like. It it can sometimes be that simple. Well, you know, and, you're, you're employing a different dimension, which now, which would in that particular situation, instead of choosing to be aggravated and impatient, you really chose to look at something that would keep that mood from happening and be thankful. I like that too. That's good, Joe. Did that's you, did I cut you yeah. Off? That's like that's just like the the philosophy of just staying in the present. And just being aware of what's going on around you, you know, um, that stopping to smell the roses type of mentality. It's like, you know, just stop to take in as you're doing something, take it, take it in a little bit from a, from a maybe an outside perspective, and uh, realize that um, it's 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 a blessing to be doing whatever you're doing at that time, uh, and just uh, appreciating that sort of thing. I, I like that concept. I forgot about that for a while. But living in the present is so strong. And, it, it, you know, it actually, today, it's harder to do. Okay? It's, it's really hard to live in the present because there's so much that, that, that pulls us out of that. But that's good. Thanks, Joe. That was very and, good. And in this present moment, Nick, I'm going to cut you off because we have to go to commercial. And we'll be right back with Moments in History with Nick Kaufman. Oh, look forward to it. What's the more in the little cottage home decor and more? Fashion. Shopping is fun at the little cottage. Update your look and discover more at the little cottage home decor and more. New Lisbon. The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. Hardware Hank knows you have projects, lots of important projects, from paint to plumbing, electrical, and yard maintenance. We have the area's largest selection of Milwaukee tools. Hey, it's what the pros use. We even have an in-store chainsaw sharpening service. It's time to build your property's value with Hardware Hank New Lisbon. This hot tub is so relaxing. The stress of the week just melts away. Hanging out with friends is fun. And we have so many reasons to get together. My Traeger Grill is the difference between a good and an amazing barbecue. The Fun Company Game Room Store is where the fun begins. You are watching Lynx 24, connecting you to your community. <laughs> hey, now, how about a little history, folks, for Thanksgiving? While we're all celebrating Thanksgiving this year with masks on and limited get-togethers and avoiding a worldwide pandemic, you know, the early colonists were celebrating with feasting for over 100 surviving an epidemic and probably not on the fourth Thursday of November. Hey, but 
pretty much everything we know, okay, up here, let me think, right there, right there everything that we know would, would <laughs> later be called Thanksgiving, but it only came from two sources, two source material, a sole letter from all of the Mayflower survivors describing the event and a few pages in a book about the settlement written 20 years after the fact. As the story goes, a harsh winter and an epidemic killed off more than half of the 100 people who landed at Plymouth Rock, including 80% of the women. The celebration was as much for surviving the winter as it was for a good fall harvest. Now, of the 50 who attended the event, 22 of them were men, 22 um, or 25 were children, and only four married women out of 20 who came over. Wow, a lot of death and also not a lot to do the cooking. Well, we all know that the Wampanoag Indians helped the colonists survive the winter. That's a big part of the story. They planted, helped them plant corn and other foodstuffs, helped them with the harvest, helped them understand what the native plants were all about. The natives themselves probably introduced the colonists to the idea of the harvest celebration, which they themselves held sometime between September and mid-November, depending upon the weather and how their harvest was. So the natives were really advanced on this thing. The natives outnumbered the colonists at the, at the first big get-together, uh, up to two to one. And they all gathered and celebrated over a three-day period, not just one meal. Well, let's talk food. While, while turkey was abundant, the Wampanoag killed and presented five deer to the colonists. So we can assume venison, not turkey, was the prime source of protein. Being on the coast, fish and shellfish were abundant and easily available in a fresh state. Lots of fruits and veggies and nuts, though. The colonists grew their own ho uh, home gardens of cabbage, carrots, cucumbers, leeks, lettuce, parsnips, and they learned how to prepare a lot of the native wild plants, including artichokes, garlic, cranberries, grapes, walnuts, chestnuts, Wow, but forget pies. There was no butter, no wheat, okay, even no oven to bake this stuff in. And potatoes were not available at the time. And no sugar available to sweeten those cranberries for any kind of a cranberry sauce. With a limited number of women to do the cooking, it's, it's thought that the unmarried men and the older children did most of the work. Nevertheless, there was plenty to eat and plenty of sport to be played among the natives to provide for this first for the colonists. Now, however, the feast was forgotten for over 200 years when the original letter that was describing all of this was rediscovered. So back in about 1840, 200 years after the, 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 the first meeting, the significance of the event reemerged. The letter was published and used to support a campaign to create the official national holiday. Led by magazine editor Sarah Hale, her campaign finally led President Lincoln to proclaim the final Thursday in November a national day of Thanksgiving. He did that in 1863, right about the time of the Gettysburg Address. And remember, we talked about that last week. So, so much, and think about that for healing a nation between those two items back then. And as for Black Friday, well, that's another whole story. So there you go, there you go gang. That's our Thanksgiving reminder in history. Wow, that's great, Nick. That is such a fascinating story. How do you find that stuff? That's easy. You go you over there and Google and you get all kinds of information. You don't have to be a historian. But if you're a historian at heart, you, you read through that stuff and you pull out what's really the most fun for readers to hear and listen to. Nobody wants to have too many dates. Nobody wants to have too many na names. But we all like to know what happened. And in fact, our last quickie is that this day in 1948, Polaroid came out with their camera for $89.75 in Boston. And then for 15 years, they led the market in instant pictures, if any of you folks out there remember that. Uh, Polaroids were the biggest thing to, and when I was growing up, if you had a Polaroid camera, you, you had, you know, you could take a picture of anything. It was like, Having the camera phone with you right now, it's like, I have a camera. I can take a photo of this right now. Let's go. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 right. that's right. Yeah, you were the cat's meow, as they might have said back in the 30s. <laughs> well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Tennessee and Joe. And we want to wish all of our viewers, those that are watching our hometown news, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, where we're connecting you, you to the community. To the community. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. It's gets good. I don't know how that came across. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs>